explain in this episode for anyone who doesn't know how options work in Major League Baseball. I'm also going to explain why Rowanzi Contreras isn't optional. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday if you're into football and or hockey. I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins where you found this. Did you notice the the deep dive that I did there in the intro sounding super serious for a moment? And then, good morning. I have to remind myself every once in a while because I get so into some of this subject matter that I'll have to catch myself and remember that we're not talking about things that are actually really important in the life scale. It's just sports. It's just baseball. But I'll also tell you this. The Contreras thing, that hits me. That's one of those. I've gotten to know this young man. I've gotten to appreciate a lot about him off the field, even more than on the field. I got to appreciate how he carried himself when he was the big stud who came up. Same way O'Neill Cruz came up. Almost the same fanfare. Throwing 100 miles an hour, mowing down everybody in Indianapolis. We couldn't wait, all of us, to see him up here. And he shows up. He pitched great for three innings. Remember that game near the end of the season a couple of years ago? A little cameo that both he and Cruz had. Exciting stuff. Electric stuff. And he had the personality to match. He had the perfect personality for it. Meaning he knew he was really good. But he wasn't going to behave as if he was above anybody else. A joy to be around. And then a crazy thing happened. His average velocity from 2022 is 95.8 miles an hour. And he could get routinely into 98 when he needed it, even 99. This past season, that average velocity went from 95.8 to 94.3. And it just kept dipping. And by the time the Pirates sent him to the minors to try to figure things out, which I always interpret to mean, we don't have any answers here, so let's hide him. He wasn't even touching 92 on the gun in some of those outings. Didn't matter the level, didn't matter if he was starting or relieving. Every once in a while, he could really, really rear back and hit 97, the one day that he did that in Seattle, he called me over to his stall and said, did you see? Did you see? 97? I was like, yeah, Rwanzi, that's great, man. 97. That's awesome. But that used to be like him waking up, rolling out of bed. He's out of options, my friends. And let me share with you what that means. When a player is new to the majors, a team has three years in which they can option a player back without worrying about losing them to waivers. This often gets misconstrued, by the way. People think that every time you send somebody down, it counts as an option. You've burned it. It's not true. It's one time for the whole year, but then you can do it as often as you want in that year. Contreras is out of those. And what that means is that if he doesn't make the big league roster out of this coming spring training, the Pirates would have no choice but to designate him for assignment, which means there are 10 days in which... The team can outright the player, see if he can clear waivers or trade him. If none of those three things happen, then the player can, in fact, be sent to the minors. But in Contreras' case, given where he was just a couple years ago, and given that he is, repeat after me, completely healthy, According to absolutely everyone, including the kid himself, has no issues whatsoever. The line will be long of teams eager to take a chance on him. And from there, the line will be long of teams employing better pitching coaches than Oscar Marine. Someone's going to figure it out. Someone's going to unlock it. And when that kid does get back to throwing 97, 98 on a consistent basis, or even doing what I had just mentioned earlier, the average 
foreseen velocity of 95.8 miles an hour, that is a world in which Rwanzi is comfortable living. He's been there. It won't be something new. It won't be a case like with Mitch Keller a couple of years ago when an outside pitching influence helped him throw as hard as 100 miles an hour. Mitch had to figure it out. Mitch had to go, whoa, what do I do with all of this? Kind of like Superman leaping off a building for the first time. He knows he can fly. It's in the manual. It says he can fly. But he's still got to navigate the whole process, right? Mitch had to figure it out. It took Mitch a couple of months. Remember that? That wasn't automatic. And it wasn't even based on his fastball. He just felt better. This kid knows what that feels like. This kid will bounce back in the biggest way. And if he does it in a Tampa Bay uniform, there will be nobody in this industry that will be surprised. So no, there isn't going to be, and there shouldn't be, there can't be an optioning of this kid. There can't be any way to let this management, this coaching staff, this instructional and development group off the hook for this player who is not hurt and who could be pitching the living hell out of the ball if only he had some help. When we come back, J1Q. This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit ProjectChildSafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Today's J1Q comes from Josh, who asks, So, DK, is there any chance the Pirates get Carlos Santana back? He was such a great addition last season. I feel like he'd really help the young guys like O'Neill Cruz. Well, Josh, I, I've shared on this show a few times details of the relationship between Santana and Cruz. And I, I get a little nervous sometimes when I do that, that it'll be misinterpreted as just a thing between Santana and Cruz. Santana is Papa Bear in that clubhouse to a lot of guys, and not just the Latin American types. He is someone these players rely on. When Mitch Keller was named to the All-Star team last season, the most emotional interaction between Mitch and anyone else was with Santana. He means a lot, but he also means more in the baseball sense than I think maybe people would have realized from the four months he spent in Pittsburgh. He's really good defensively. And the players the Pirates currently have lined up to play first base either are not very good defensively, meaning Rowdy Telez, or haven't had a ton of experience over there, meaning Jared Triolo and Connor Joe. I think all of us, and man, am I no exception to this, get too caught up in plug and play with offensive figures and say, all right, well, we'll put this guy here. He profiles to fit at that spot on the field with that bat. And we forget that you have to make the plays. It's not as important or as valued, and the advanced metrics will support me on this, as the offense, but it matters. And if you've got yourself a defense that has Brian Hayes at third base thrown across a diamond, you want to make those outs count. You want to make those outs count if it's Cruz at short, Leo Verpaguero at second, however it is that you want to do it. You want to make those outs count. You are not 
stacked up as a roster that's going to blow teams off the field with home runs. You've got to make the plays in the field, and you've got to make them at first base where they're expected to be made 100% of the time. Looking at it offensively, if the knock against Telez is that, well, he had one good year, so you don't know what you're going to get. If you get the 35 home runs out of him that Milwaukee got a couple of years ago, then jackpot. If you don't, if you get what the Brewers got out of him last year, then you're really sunk at that position. With Santana, look, you might not get super excited about his stats, but you know what they're going to be. Look at the back of that card, and you'll see the model of consistency even, even moving into his late 30s. I am all in favor of Santana coming back. And you know who else is? Santana. Just need to make it work out. In other words, pay him. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. We're going to do another one of these tomorrow. Tomorrow.